So here we have the H150. We're going to go ahead and start by peeling that bottom red base plate off. You want to be careful with that. You don't want to bend it one way or the other. It usually comes off pretty easily. Here we go. We're just going to start working one side out. We're going to work the other side out a little bit more. And it should just pop right off. Here it goes. There it is. That's going to expose the springs that are uh, housed underneath. And those are what keep the cams uh, locked onto the line. and kept in the closed position. Next step is going to be to take a bolt or some other similar tool and we're going to use that to press the red caps out of the top of the cams there. So you just pop that right in there. They should lift right out. You want to be careful and do this over some type of a container because this is going to expose the first race of ball bearings you see there um, in the top of the cam. You can go ahead and lift that whole aluminum cam now off of the base. Those balls are going to drop out of there and now it's going to expose the uh, bottom two races that are separated by that plastic red washer. Go ahead and dump those out, remove that washer, and uh, go ahead and start the same process for the other side. Now you've got the entire cam disassembled. You, the, uh, all the aluminum parts there are, you know, fairly indestructible, and those, you know, you're going to hang on to. You can wash those, you know, hot water and soap just to clean out any dirt or grime. All the other parts, all the red plastic parts can be replaced, um, as well as the ball bearings and the springs. Uh, the next step is going to be um, to replace it with new parts or any, or, and replace any old or decrepit parts. Um, and, uh, one trick that you can use for putting these ball bearings back in place if you don't have the patience or super quick fast speed that I do here is to put a little bit of soap or uh, or shaving cream or something you know something water soluble with a little bit it's a little bit sticky to help keep those balls in place so you just stack them up there you also notice that on that red washer that you put there to separate the two races that there is a lip or a little edge that uh, helps keep uh, that retains the uh, that top race balls and you drop on that top aluminum cam uh, should seat right on there fill the top race with uh, with the ball bearings and the uh, the red plastic cap just drops right back in there. You'll notice that it is it goes in the same way that the bottom plate does. It just has a stepped cone shaped um, rod that just pushes right in there and seats pretty well. Next step is going to be to turn it over. You're going to replace the uh, the torsion spring. It has two little hooks on the end. You'll notice there just when you took it off that hook right around the two posts that stick up, and that's pretty easy to install. It just kind of flips right on over there. Uh, one trick some people do is uh, just to uh, in case one of the springs breaks and to give a little bit of extra force when the in the closing of the cleat is to put a second spring in there. You can buy cleats already pre-made with that or you could just buy a cam cleat and install a second set of springs relatively easily. So now we've gone ahead and gotten both sides completely put together. We're going to go ahead and install the last spring there we go clipped right in there you'll see both of them are uh, properly in place and now we're going to take that bottom base plate make sure it's oriented correctly you will notice it is not squared it's slightly asymmetrical and that just presses right back down into the bottom and we have completed the reassembly of the Harkin 150 cam cleat <laughs>